YouTube, what's up? Back again for another daily fishing video here on Andrew Upshaw Fishing. Today's video is going to highlight a technique that I'm sure will help you catch more bass. I mean, it has helped me throughout the years, especially when I moved to Oklahoma. I mean, it's it's a rig that's used here a lot, and it is the hard head, you know, the, the swing head style uh, bait, this right here. You know, this is what I originally started fishing with. We're going to talk about that, a few of my favorite baits to throw on there. And a couple of the different heads that I like to use to catch more fish. So, hey guys, real quick, we jumped over 17,000 subscribers, which is fantastic. Actually, I'm a little over that right now. And I can't be more thankful. Uh, we're growing this channel. We're doing this daily. We're knocking it out. And I hope y'all are enjoying it. Make sure if y'all have any questions or maybe a video idea, you drop it below. And what is your favorite bottom bugging style bait you know is it a biffle bug is it a rage bug menace what is it i'd love to know um make sure you drop that below as well and if you haven't yet though and you're watching this channel and you're watching it consistently make sure you hit that sub button in the bottom right hand corner i greatly would appreciate it so guys let's go ahead and jump right on into this video and let's talk a little bit about bottom bugging All right, guys, today we're going to talk about bottom bugging. You know, that's how it was originally coined. People were talking about it. They, you know, a bunch of tournaments got one on. Tommy Biffle absolutely was probably, and it still is, the most winningest pro when it comes to fishing that hard head system on the bottom. You know, like I said before, I actually, I started out using the hard head. I use it in two sizes, 7 16 11 16 and, and from time to time, I still put a Biffle bug on it. It definitely works. Um, I keep my colors fairly basic on the bug uh sooner run which is like a watermelon red i'll now throw like a green pumpkin green pumpkin blue something like that but i keep it extremely basic i don't want to like overwhelm it or anything like that but that's when i first started it you know and, and the way you fish that that bug on the bottom the way i was taught to fish it is you cast it out and you let it go to the bottom and you just start reeling it and you want to fish it as fast as you can while keeping bottom contact so I'm going to cast it and reel. And if I'm feeling it hit the bottom, hit rocks, hit timber, whatever it may be, I'm fishing at the right speed. Uh, so, But over time, one thing that I've, I've noticed is I've changed my baits up slightly. I haven't, I don't just go to the biffle bug and if I, they don't bite it, then I don't catch them. I actually switch it between a handful of different baits and I use a different head now mainly. Um, and that head is the jointed structure head. As you can see here, uh, the way the head is shaped it still has that football style shape to a certain level, but it's way different. Um, as you can tell, it has a pointed nose. So this is gonna allow it to come through brush, uh, grass, and all that stuff without snagging it up as bad. And it still has, you know, the benefit of the swinging head. So over time, I've kind of started using different baits. And one bait in particular I use is a rage bug. You know, I, I just have a lot of confidence in a rage bug. It, you know, it has the coffee scent already, and it has a little bit more action than the biffle bug. You know, the, the standard biffle bug has two legs in the back, and that's basically it. So what I do, one of my most important things is I pull these arms off the side. I detach them because they're attached, and then I detach the tail. So when this thing's swimming through the water, there's a lot of action, a lot of stuff going on right here. It comes in a bunch of different colors, and I actually do throw quite a few of the colors in this. I mean, the rage bug's just a good bait. I you, Falcon Lake crawls the one I have tied on here. If you have a situation where you're dealing with a red style crawfish, this is one of those perfect colors to throw and catch fish on. It has a little bit of gold flake to it. I throw watermelon red. I throw green pumpkin. And, and I, one thing I always do is dye the tail just a little bit. And depending on the time of year, if I'm early spring, I'm going to dye them orange. If I'm later spring, like going into the post spawn like right now, I dye them chartreuse. Something about that little bit of color change I think really gets those fish worked up. So when I'm throwing the jointed structure head like I have here, I throw it anywhere between a half and a three quarter ounce. And I'm gonna show you real quick how to rig this rage bug. So basically when I rig it up, and I'm gonna go to about the second ring on the rage bug, just like so. I'm gonna push it up. And as you can tell, when I push it up, the eye is completely exposed right here. So as you can see, you can actually see the eye right there. It's completely exposed, and you want it to be completely exposed 
because it's going to give it the max amount of action that it's going to do. So when this thing's bouncing across the bottom and scurrying across the bottom, that bait's going to be constantly just kind of moving naturally in the water. Now, this might be the most important part of this rig. So once I have it pushed up on the hook like so, I'm actually going to bend the bait in just like so. So as you can tell, I bent the bait to where it touches the, the hook shank. And I'm going to push it through. Okay, it's bent. I'll push it all the way through where the bait is tight. As you can tell, the bait's very tight. And as you can see, the hook is sticking completely through. And then I'm going to just pull the bait up and let the hook lay right there in the middle. Now, this is a very important part. You don't re-hook it. You leave it open. And sometimes I'll even let it ride like this in the water. So when I'm reeling it, I'll actually reel it on the bottom just like this. I know it's kind of crazy, but your hookup ratio, if you leave that hook somewhat exposed, like so, and just push your bait up, your hookup ratio is immensely better. Because when those fish come up there and grab it, they grab it, they push that plastic down immediately. There's nothing, you don't have to set the hook as hard. And the, th the problem is, is a lot of times you don't actually feel the bite. So you're reeling and it just kind of gets weird. It gets heavy. And you're like, man, I think I got one. And then you go to set the hook. Well, a lot of times you got slack in your line. And so having that hook exposed, the hook is going to still penetrate even on a slack line hook set. You obviously want to set the hook the best you can and get as much slack out as you can, but sometimes we just don't have that luxury. And so that will actually increase your hookup ratio by about 40%. I mean, it, you will absolutely see the difference. If you're, if you're just rigging it like normal, so like if I just rig it where it's Texas rig like that, you're going to miss so many bass. I mean, I'm, I'm guys, I'm telling you, I've done it for too many years. If you lay that hook in there like that, just lay that hook on top, just pull your bait like that, you're gonna your hookup ratio will go through the roof. So in situations where I feel like the rage bug's too big, you know, we we have those situations where it's like, man, I don't think the crawfish are that big, or maybe the bass where you're fishing just aren't very big. That's actually when I go to the rage menace. Now, I used to make fun of the menace a lot. I wasn't a big fan of it, but over the years, it's become one of my favorite bottom bugging baits. It's way more compact than say a biffle bug or a rage bug or anything like that. As you can tell, it still has the kicking style legs. It's about a half an inch to an inch shorter than the rage bug, but I don't throw it in white. I just grabbed it for the sake of the video so you could see it well. But it's definitely one of those baits that I use at Table Rock, Beaver Lake, uh, Cumberland, uh, Cherokee, play, like, you know, those upper Midwest lakes, um, or uh, out east lakes, you know, like the um, Highland Reservoirs, places like that that have a lot of smallmouth, uh, spotted bass, like uh, Smith Lake, this is a great bait as well. So you really want to switch it up. You want to have a couple different offerings that will work for you. I remember when I was at Lake Cherokee, one of my favorite baits was actually throwing this menace. Now, I didn't have to do it in the tournament, but I was throwing this menace on a three-quarter ounce structure head like this, and I mean, it looked kind of goofy. I'll show you exactly what it looked like. But you, I would actually rig this thing up, and it's so heavy. That's an extremely heavy head for such a small plastic. But basically, I would rig this thing up, and the hook would just be enormous on it. Um, but that's it right there. And I would reel this thing across the bottom, and good lord, like, I caught so many big smallmouth and largemouth in practice on this thing, and I just never had to do it in the tournament. It was just, I was really fortunate as far as that goes. So that's my typical rig. That's the way I fish my rage, you know, my rage bug, my rage menace. And it's, you would think it would stop there, but it doesn't. I actually have a little sneaky rig for when those fish get on shad. And I'll give you a perfect scenario. So like on a Gunnersville, uh, Kentucky Lake, Pickwick. Actually, Kentucky Lake might not be in that list right now. But where you're dealing with shell beds that have grass around or stumps or laydowns or brush piles but the shell bed is where the fish are eating the shad uh one of my favorite rigs is taking a, anywhere between a three eighths and a half ounce structure head white one and putting a 3.75 inch rage swimmer on there and reeling it around the cover so you cast it out and let it go to the bottom and then you just reel it really slow well you don't have to worry about the snags anymore you don't have to worry about it hanging up in the the, the juice like where the fish are gonna be you don't have to worry about that anymore so that's a huge deal for casting it and reeling it across the bottom you're going to get a lot more bites you're going to catch a lot more bass and that's what it's all about 
So that structure head will allow that bait to swim, have maximum amount of action, and still be able to get those bites. The only problem is you got to use a little bit stiffer rod because you got to get that hook set. So when they grab it, you want to do the exact same, barely hook it in and just lay it up there just like that. Don't rehook it. So when those bass come grab it, that hook gets immediately exposed. Guys, I hope y'all like this tip, these tips on fishing the the actual structure head and reeling it on the bottom. It's a big deal, especially this time of year post spawn. One of my favorite ways to fish. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you can, share it with a friend and hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner if you don't mind. And drop a comment below what is your favorite plastic to put on a swing head. Guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.